Esperanto, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. Esperanto is the most widely spoken constructed international auxiliary language. Its name derives from Doctoro Esperanto, the pseudonym under which L. L. Zamanov published the first book detailing Esperanto, the Unea Libro, in 1887. The word Esperanto means one who hopes in the language itself. The language's original name was La Insanatia Lingvo. Zamanov's goal was to create an easy to learn and politically neutral language that would serve as a universal second language to foster peace and international understanding. Esperanto has approximately 1,000 native speakers, i.e. people who learned Esperanto as one of their native languages from their parents. There is controversy over the number of people who are fluent in Esperanto. Estimates range from 10,000 to as high as 2 million. The users are spread out in about 115 countries. This diverse and international community is evidence to most Esperanto speakers that the language is usable by people from all over the world and that it can establish communication between them. Although no country has adopted the language officially, Esperanto was officially recognised by UNESCO in 1954. Today, Esperanto is employed in world travel, correspondence, cultural exchange, conventions, literature, language instruction, television, movies, and radio broadcasting. The first International Esperanto Congress was organised in France, Boulogne sur Mer, in 1905. Since then, international conferences and meetings have been organised around the world with Esperanto every year. At least one major search engine, Google, offers searching of Esperanto related websites via an Esperanto portal. There is evidence that learning Esperanto may provide a good foundation for learning languages in general. Esperanto is also the language of instruction in one university, the Accademia Internazia della Scienza in San Marino. The article has a table of contents. The topics are history, with relation to 20th century totalitarianism, official use, linguistic properties covering classification, writing system, phonology, grammar, vocabulary, useful phrases, a sample text, the next section is education with language acquisition, then community covering geography and demography, culture, famous authors in Esperanto, popular culture, science, goals of the movement, symbols and flags, politics, and various religions such as the Umutu, the Baha'i Faith, Spiritism, Bible Translations, Christianity, and Islam. The next section is Criticism, followed by Modifications and Epinomous Entities. History Esperanto was created in the late 1870s and early 1880s by Dr. Ludovic Lazarus Zamenov, a Polish Jewish ophthalmologist from Bielystok at the time of the Russian Empire. According to Zamenov, he created this language to foster harmony between people of different countries. 
his feelings in the situation in beer livestock may be gleaned from an extract from his famous letter to Nikolai Borovko. The place where I was born and spent all my childhood gave direction to all my future struggles. In beer livestock, the inhabitants were divided into four distinct elements. Russians, Poles, Germans and Jews. Each of these spoke their own language and looked on all the others as enemies. In such a town, a sensitive nature feels more acutely than elsewhere the misery caused by language division and sees at every step that the diversity of languages is the first, or at least the most influential, basis for the separation of the human family into groups of enemies. I was brought up as an idealist. I was taught that all people were brothers. While outside in my street, at every step, I felt there were no people. Only Russians, Poles, Germans, Jews, and so on. This was always a great torment to my infant mind. Although many people may smile at such anguish for the world in a child, since at that time, I thought that grown-ups were omnipotent, so I often said to myself that when I grew up, I would certainly destroy this evil. L. L. Zamenhof, in a letter to one N. Borovko, 1895. After some ten years of development, which Zamenhof spent translating literature into Esperanto, as well as writing original prose and verse, the first book of Esperanto grammar was published in Warsaw in July 1887. The number of speakers grew rapidly over the next few decades, at first primarily in the Russian Empire and Eastern Europe, then in Western Europe, the Americas, China and Japan. In the early years, speakers of Esperanto kept in contact primarily through correspondence and periodicals. But in 1905, the first World Congress of Esperanto speakers was held in boulogne sur mer France. Since then, World Congresses have been held in different countries every year, except during the two World Wars. Since the Second World War, they have been attended by an average of over 2,000 and up to 6,000 people. Relation to 20th Century Totalitarianism as a potential vehicle for international understanding, Esperanto attracted the suspicion of many totalitarian states. The situation was especially pronounced in Nazi Germany, Imperial Japan and the Soviet Union under Joseph Stalin. In Germany, there was an additional motivation to persecute Esperanto, because Zamenhof was Jewish. In his work, Mein Kampf, Hitler mentioned Esperanto as an example of a language that would be used by an international Jewish conspiracy once they achieved world domination. Esperantists were killed during the Holocaust, with Zamenhof's family in particular singled out for murder. In the early years of the Soviet Union, Esperanto was given a measure of government support and an officially recognised Soviet Esperanto Association came into being. However, in 1937, Stalin reversed this policy. He denounced Esperanto as the language of spies and had Esperantists exiled and executed. The use of Esperanto was effectively banned until 1956. After the Spanish Civil War, Francoist Spain persecuted the anarchists and Catalan nationalists among which Esperanto was extended but in the 1950s, the Esperanto movement was tolerated again. Official use Esperanto has never been an official language of any recognised country. However, there were plans at the beginning of the 20th century to establish neutral Morsnet of the world's first Esperanto state. Huan Huntong, a Chinese linguist, promoted the replacement of Chinese with Esperanto. In addition, the self-proclaimed artificial island micronation of Rose Island 
used Esperanto as its official language in 1968. The US Army has published military phrasebooks in Esperanto to be used in war games by mock enemy forces. In the summer of 1924, the American Radio Relay League adopted Esperanto as its official international auxiliary language and hoped that the language would be used by radio amateurs in international communications, but its actual use for radio communications was negligible. Esperanto is the working language of several non-profit international organisations such as the Senatsaisia Asocio Tutmonda. Most others are specifically Esperanto organisations. The largest of these, the World Esperanto Association, has an official consultative relationship with the United Nations and UNESCO. Esperanto is also the first language of teaching and administration of one university, the International Academy of Sciences, San Marino. Linguistic properties Classification As a constructed language, Esperanto is not genealogically related to any ethnic language. It has been described as a language lexically predominantly Romanic, morphologically intensely agglutinative, and to a certain degree isolating in character. The phonology, grammar, vocabulary and semantics are based on the Western Indo-European languages. The phenomic inventory is essentially Slavic, as is much of the semantics, while the vocabulary derives primarily from the Romance languages, with a lesser contribution from the Germanic languages. Pragmatics and other aspects of the language are not specified by Zamenhof's original documents were influenced by the native languages of early speakers, primarily Russian, Polish, German and French. Typologically, Esperanto has prepositions and a free pragmatic word order that by default is subject, verb, object. Adjectives can be freely placed before or after the nouns they modify, though placing them before the noun is more common. New words are formed through extensive prefixing and suffixing. Writing system Esperanto is written with a modified version of the Latin alphabet, including six letters with diacritics. Ch, j, ch, j, sh, using circumflexes, and w, with a brief. The alphabet does not include the letters in English q, w, x, or y except in unassimilated foreign names. The 28-letter alphabet is A, Bo, So, Cho, Do, E, Fo, Go, Jo, Ho, Ho, I, Yo, Jo, ko, lo, mo, no, o, po, ro, so, sho, to, o, wo, bo, and zo. Writing diacritic letters. The letters with diacritics found in the Latin extended A section of the Unicode standard once caused problems with printing and computing. This was particularly true with the five letters with circumflexes as they do not occur in any other language. The diacritics are normally only a problem now with computing situations such as internet chat groups 
and databases that are limited to ASCII characters. There are two principal workarounds to this problem, which substitute digraphs for the accented letters. Zamenhof, the inventor of Esperanto, created a H convention, which replaces CH, J, CH, J, SH, and W with CH, GH, HH, JH, SH, and U, respectively. A more recent X convention has gained ground since the advent of computing. This system replaces each diacritic with an X after the letter, producing the six D graphs CX, GX, HX, JX, SX, and UX. There are computer layouts that support the Esperanto alphabet and some systems use software that automatically substitute X or H convention digraphs with the corresponding diacritic letters. One example of this is EK for Microsoft Windows. Another example is the Esperanto Wikipedia, which uses the X convention. When e.g. CX is entered, this will automatically appear as the correct CH in the saved text. Phonology Esperanto has 22 consonants, 5 vowels and 2 semivowels, that combine with the vowels to form 6 diphthongs. Tone is not used to distinguish the meanings of words, and stress is always on the penultimate vowel in fully Esperanto words unless the final vowel, O, is elided. A practice which occurs mostly in poetry. For example, familio, family, is fa mi li o, with the stress on the final e. But when the word is used without the final o, family, the stress remains on the e, fa mi li. Consonants. This branto has 22 consonants. The sound r is usually rolled but may be tapped r. The v is normally pronounced like an English v, v, but may be pronounced v, v between the English v and w, or w, depending on the language background of the speaker. A semivowel, w, occurs normally in diphthongs after the vowels a and e, not as a consonant w. Common if debated assimilation includes the pronunciation of nyuk and kz. A large number of consonant clusters can occur, up to three in initial position, as in stranga, which means strange, and four in medial position, as in instrui, meaning teach. Final clusters are uncommon except in far foreign names. Poetic liaison of the final u and a few very basic words such as cent for a hundred and post after. Vowels. There are only five vowels and a good deal of variation in pronunciation is tolerated. A glottal stop may occur between adjacent vowels in some people's speech, especially when the two vowels are the same, as in hero o and praavo. Grammar Esperanto words are derived by stringing together prefixes, roots and suffixes. This process is regular so that people can create new words as they speak and be understood. Compound words are formed with the modifier first, head final order, as in English. Compare bird song and songbird.
and likewise Bardo Canto and Canto Bardo. The different parts of speech are marked with their own suffixes. All common nouns end in O. All adjectives end in A. All adverbs end in E. And all verbs in one of the six tenths and mood suffixes, such as the present tense, as. Plural nouns end in oi, whereas direct objects end in on. Plural direct objects end in the combination oin. Dasho indicates the word is a noun. Dash ya indicates the plural and dash na indicates the accusative. Adjectives agree with their nouns. Their endings are plural, I, accusative, an, and plural accusative, ain. The suffix na, besides indicating the direct object, is used to indicate movement and a few other things as well. The six verb inflections consist of three tenses and three moods. They are present tense, as, future tense, os, past tense, is, infinitive mood, i, conditional mood, us, and jussive mood, u, used for wishes and commands. Verbs are not marked for personal number. For example, canti means to sing, mi cantas means I sing, vi cantas means you sing, and illi cantas means they sing. Word order is comparatively free. Adjectives may precede or follow nouns. Subjects, verbs and objects may occur in any order. However, the article LA, demonstratives such as TU, for that, and prepositions such as CHE, for AT, must come before their related nouns. Similarly, the negative NE, for NOT, and conjunctions such as KAI, and ke, and then that, must precede the phrase or clause they introduce. In copolar, A equals B clauses, word order is just as important as in English. People are animals is distinguished from animals are people. Vocabulary. The core vocabulary of Esperanto was defined by Lingvo Internacia, published by Zamenhof in 1887. The book listed 900 roots. These could be expanded into tens of thousands of words using prefixes, suffixes and compounding. In 1897, Zamenhof published the first Esperanto dictionary, Universala Votaro which had a larger set of roots. The rules of the language allowed speakers to borrow new roots as needed. It was recommended, however, that speakers use the most international forms and then derive related meanings from these. Since then, many new words have been borrowed, primarily, but not solely, from the Western European languages. Not all proposed borrowings became widespread, but many do, especially technical and scientific terms. Terms for everyday use, on the other hand, are more likely to be derived from existing roots. Computillo, computer, for instance, is formed from the verb computi, compute, and the suffix illo, tool. Words acquire new meanings based on usage in other languages. For instance, the word muso, mouse, has acquired the meaning of a computer input device based on the parallel usage in English. Esperanto speakers often debate about whether a particular borrowing is justified or whether 
meaning can be expressed by deriving from or extending the meaning of existing words. Some compounds and formed words in Esperanto are not entirely straightforward. For example, el doni, literally give out, means publish, paralleling the usage of certain Western European languages, such as German. In addition, the suffix um has no defined meaning. Words using the suffix must be learned separately, such as dextren to the right and dextrumen clockwise. There are not many idiomatic or slang words in Esperanto, as these forms of speech tend to make international communication difficult, working against Esperanto's main goal. Useful phrases. We will now list some useful Esperanto words and phrases. English first, followed by Esperanto. Hello. Saluton. Yes. Yes. No. Ne. Good morning. Bonan matenon. Good evening. Bonan vesperon. Good night. Bonan nocton. Goodbye. Gis revido. What is your name? Kiel vi nomijas? My name is John. Mi nomijas Johanna. How are you? Kiel vi fartas? Do you speak Esperanto? Tu vi prolas Esperanton? I don't understand you. Mi ne comprenas vin. All right. Bonne. Okay. Juste. Thank you. Dankon. You're welcome. Ne dan kinder. Please. Bon volu. Gesundheit. Sanon. Congratulations. Gratulon. I love you. Mia mes vin. One beer, please. Unu bieron, mi petas. What is it? Kio estas tio? That is a dog. Tio estas hundo. Peace. Patson. The following short extract gives an idea of the character of Esperanto. En multai locoi de Chinio estis temploi de Veracu Rijo. Dum tru secetso uni prigis en la temploi, Che la dracu regio donu pluvon alla huma mondo. Tiam draco estis simbolo de la supernatura estajo, kai pli poste gi farigis pra patro de la plei altai regantoi, kai simbolis la absolutan autoritaton de feuda imperi estro. La imperi estro pretendis che li estas filo de la draco. Ciui liai viv bezonajoi partis la nomon draco, cae estis ornamitae per diversae draco figuroi. Nun cie en cinio videblas draco ornamentajoi, cae circulas legendoi pri dracoi. The English translation. In many places in China, there were temples of the Dragon King. During times of drought, people would pray in the temples. The Dragon King would give rain to the human world. At that time, the dragon was a symbol of the supernatural. Later on, it became the ancestor of the highest rulers and symbolized the absolute authority of the feudal emperor. The emperor claimed to be the son of a dragon. All of his personal possessions carried the name Dragon and were decorated with various dragon figures. Now dragon decorations can be seen everywhere in China and legends about dragons circulate. Education. The majority of Esperanto speakers 
learn the language through self-directed study, online tutorials and correspondence courses taught by volunteers. In more recent years, teaching websites like Learnu have become popular. Esperanto instruction is occasionally available at schools, including four primary schools in a pilot project under the supervision of the University of Manchester and by one count at 69 universities. However, outside China and Hungary, these mostly involve informal arrangements rather than dedicated departments or state sponsorship. Eat Vos Lurand University in Budapest has a department of interlinguistics and Esperanto from 1966 to 2004, after which time the instruction moved to vocational colleges. There are state examinations for Esperanto instructors. The Senate of Brazil passed a bill in 2009 that would make Esperanto an optional part of the curriculum in public schools. As of 2010, the bill has not yet passed by the Chamber of Deputies. Various educators have estimated that Esperanto can be learned in anywhere from one quarter to one twentieth the amount of time required for other languages. Claude Piron, a psychologist formerly at the University of Geneva and Chinese, English, Russian, Spanish translator for the United Nations, argued that Esperanto is far more intuitive than many ethnic languages. Esperanto relies entirely on innate reflexes and differs from all other languages in that you can always trust your natural tendency to generalise patterns. The same neuropsychological law called by Jean Piaget generalising simulation applies to word formation as well as to grammar. The Institute of Cybernetic Pedagogy at Paderborn in Germany has compared the length of study time it takes Francophile high school students to obtain comparable standard levels in Esperanto, English, German and Italian. The results were 2,000 hours studying German, 1,500 hours studying English, 1,000 hours studying Italian, 150 hours studying Esperanto. It should be noted, however, that these figures can only reflect the respective learning difficulty if these language is for native French speakers. They should be compared to figures from other countries to allow for a more general perspective on the learning of Esperanto. Italian and French are more closely related to each other than to English or German, both being r Romance languages. Language acquisition. Four primary schools in Britain, with some 230 pupils, are currently following a course in Protoduetic Esperanto, that is, instruction in Esperanto to raise language awareness and accelerate subsequent learning of foreign languages under the supervision of the University of Manchester. Studies have been conducted in New Zealand, United States, Germany, Italy and Australia. The results of these studies were favourable and demonstrated that studying Esperanto before another foreign language expedites the acquisition of the other natural language. This appears to be because learning subsequent foreign languages is easier than learning one's first, while the use of grammatically simple and cultural flexible auxiliary language like Esperanto lessens the first learning language hurdle. In one study, a group of European secondary school students studied Esperanto for one year, then French for three years, and ended up with a significantly better command of French than a control group who studied French for all four years. Similar results have been found for other combinations of native and second languages, 
as well as for arrangements in which the course of study was reduced to two years, of which six months is spent learning Esperanto. Community Geography and Demography Esperanto is by far the most widely spoken constructed language in the world. Speakers are most numerous in Europe and East Asia, especially in urban areas. Esperanto is particularly prevalent in the northern and eastern countries of Europe, in China, Korea, Japan and Iran, within Asia, in Brazil, Argentina and Mexico, in the Americas, and in Togo, in Africa. Number of speakers. An estimate for the number of speakers of Esperanto was made by Sidney S. Colbert, a retired psychology professor at the University of Washington and a longtime Esperantist who tracked down and tested Esperanto speakers in sample areas in dozens of countries over a period of 20 years. Colbert concluded that between 1 and 2 million people speak Esperanto at Foreign Service Level 3, professionally proficient, that is, able to communicate moderately complex ideas without hesitation, and to follow speeches, radio broadcasts, etc. Colbert's estimate was not made for Esperanto alone, but formed part of his listing of estimates for all languages of over 1 million speakers, published annually in the World Almanic and Book of Facts. Colbert's most detailed account of his methodology is found in a 1989 letter to David Wolfe. Since Colbert never published detailed intermediate results from particular countries and regions, it's difficult to independently gorge the accuracy of his results. In the Almanic, his estimates for numbers of language speakers were rounded to the nearest million. Thus, the number of Esperanto speakers is shown as 2 million. The latter figures appear in, in Ethnolog. Assuming that this figure is correct, that means that about 0.03% of the world's total population speaks the language. This is not Zaminov's goal of a universal language, but it represents a level of popularity unmatched by any other constructed language. Marcus Sikosek, now Zico van Dijk, has challenged this figure of 1.6 million as exaggerated. He estimated that even if Esperanto speakers were evenly distributed, assuming 1 million Esperanto speakers worldwide would lead one to expect about 180 in the city of Cologne. Van Dyck finds only 30 fluent speakers in that city, and similarly smaller than expected figures in several other places thought to have larger than average concentration of Esperanto speakers. He also notes that there are a total of 20,000 members of the various Esperanto organisations. Other estimates are higher. Though there are undoubtedly more, many Esperanto speakers who are not members of any Esperanto organisation, he thinks it's unlikely that there are 50 times more speakers than organisation members. Finnish linguist Juaku Lindstedt, an expert on native-born Esperanto speakers, presented the following scheme to show the overall proportions of language capabilities within the Esperanto community. 1,000 have Esperanto as their native language, 10,000 speak it fluently, 100,000 can use it actively, 1 million understand a large amount passively, 10 million have studied it to some extent at some time. In the absence of Dr. Kuhlberg's detailed sampling data or any other census data, it is impossible to state the number of speakers with certainty. 
Few observers probably were challenged the following statement from the website of the World Esperanto Association. Numbers of textbooks sold and membership of local societies put the number of people with some knowledge of the language in the hundreds of thousands and possibly millions. In 2009, Lou von Rolschoven used 2001's year census data from Hungary and Lithuania as a base for an estimate, resulting in approximately 160,000 to 300,000 to speak the language actively or fluently throughout the world, with about 80,000 to 150,000 of those being in the European Union. Native speakers. Ethnologue relates there are some 200 to 2,000 native Esperanto speakers, denas kuloi, who have learned the language from birth through their Esperanto speaking parents. This usually happens when Esperanto is a chief or only common language in an international family, but sometimes occurs in a family of devoted Esperantists. The most famous native speaker of Esperanto is businessman George Soros. Theodore Schwartz, his father, was an Esperantist. Also notable is young Holocaust victim Peter Gintz, whose drawing of the planet Earth, as viewed from the moon, was carried aboard the Space Shuttle Columbia in 2003. Culture Esperanto speakers can access an international culture, including a large body of original as well as translated literature. There are over 25,000 Esperanto books, both originals and translations, as well as several regularly distributed Esperanto magazines. Esperanto speakers use the language for free accommodations with Esperantists in 92 countries using the Passporta Servo or to develop pen pal friendships abroad through the Esperanto pen pal service. Every year, 1,500 to 3,000 Esperanto speakers meet for the World Congress of Esperanto, the Universala Congresso de Esperanto. The European Esperanto Union, Europa Esperanto Union, regroups the national Esperanto associations of the EU member states and holds congresses every two years. The most recent was in Maribor, Slovenia in July August 2007. It attracted 256 delegates from 28 countries, including two members of the European Parliament. Miss Malgorzata Hanslik of Poland and Miss Ludmila Novak of Slovenia. Historically, much Esperanto music such as Kaitiel Plu has been in various folk traditions. In recent decades, more rock and other modern genres have appeared. An example being that of the Swedish band Persone. There is also a variety of classical and semi-classical choral music, both original and translated, as well as a large ensemble music that includes voices singing Esperanto texts. Louis Harrison, who notably incorporated styles and instruments from world cultures in his music, used Esperanto titles and text in several of his works, such as La Coro Sutro, David Gaines used Esperanto poems, as well as an excerpt from a speech by Dr. Zamenhof for his Symphony No. 1, Esperanto, for mezzo-soprano and orchestra, 1994-1998. He wrote original Esperanto text for his Povis Plori Mine Plu, translated as I Can Cry No Longer, for unaccompanied SATB choir, in 1994. There are also shared traditions such as Zamenhof Day and shared behaviour patterns. Esperantists speak primarily in Esperanto 
at international Esperanto meetings. Detractors of Esperanto occasionally criticise it as having no culture. Proponents such as Professor Humphrey Tonking of the University of Hartford observed that Esperanto is culturally neutral by design, as it was intended to be a facilitator between cultures, not to be the carrier of any one culture. The late Scottish Esperanto author William Auld has written extensively on the subject, arguing that Esperanto is the common expression of human culture, unencumbered by national frontiers. Thus, it is considered a culture on its own. Others point out Esperanto's potential for strengthening a common European identity, as it combines features of several European languages. In popular culture, Esperanto has been used in a number of films and novels. Typically, this is done either to add the exotic flavour of a foreign language without representing any particular ethnicity, or to avoid going to the trouble of inventing a new language. The Charlie Chaplin film, The Great Dictator, 1940, showed Jewish ghetto shop signs in Esperanto to create the atmosphere of some foreign East European country without referencing any particular East European language. Road to Singapore, also in 1940, has a song in Esperanto. Two full-length feature films have been produced with dialogue entirely in Esperanto. Angoroi in 1964 and Incubus, a 1965 B-movie horror film. Canadian actor William Shatner learned Esperanto to a limited level so that he could star in Incubus. Although Esperantists have stated that he speaks the language with a French accent, something he may have picked up while studying at McGill University. In Fritz Lang's Metropolis, 1927, Shop and road signs in Esperanto appear in many background scenes. Other amateur productions have been made, such as a dramatization of the novel Gerda Malaperis. Translation Gerda has disappeared. A number of mainstream films in national languages have used Esperanto in some way, such as Gattaca 1997 in which Esperanto can be overheard on the public address system. In the 1994 film Street Fighter, Esperanto is the native language of the fictional country of Shadaloo, and in a barracks scene, the soldiers of villain M. Bison sing a rousing Russian army style chorus, the Bison Troopers marching song, in the language. Esperanto is also spoken and appears on the signs in the film Blade Trinity. In the British comedy Red Dwarf, Arnold Rimmer is seen attempting to learn Esperanto in a number of early episodes, including Crichton. In the first season, signs on the titular spacecraft are in both English and Esperanto. Esperanto is used as a universal language in the far future of Harry Harrison's Stainless Steel Rat and Death World stories. Musician Stephen Kellogg has acknowledged that his song Shady Esperanto and the Young Hearts from his 2009 album The Bear is a reference to the language of Esperanto. In his song though, Shady Esperanto is a character. The opening song, Memoro della Stona, in the popular video game Final Fantasy XI, was written in Esperanto. This was the first game in the series that was online and the composer Nobeo Uematsu felt that Esperanto was a good language to symbolise worldwide unity. The piece has been performed worldwide. In the Michael Chabon novel The Yiddish Policeman's Union, the main character lives in the Hotel Zamenhof. All of the signs in the hotel are written in Esperanto. Science. In 1921, the French Academy of Sciences recommended using Esperanto for international scientific communication. 
a few scientists and mathematicians such as Maury Frechette, mathematics, John C. Wells, linguistics, Helmar Frank, pedagogy and cybernetics, and Nobel Laureate Reinhard Salton, economics, have published part of their work in Esperanto. Frank and Salton were among the founders of the International Academy of Sciences in San Marino, sometimes called the Esperanto University, where Esperanto is the primary language of teaching and administration. Goals of the movement. Zamenhof's gut intention was to create an easy to learn language to foster international understanding. It was to serve as an international auxiliary language, that is, as a universal second language, not to replace ethnic languages. This goal was widely shared among Esperanto speakers in the early decades of the movement. Later, Esperanto speakers began to see the language and culture that had grown up around it as an ends in themselves, even if Esperanto is never adopted by the United Nations or other organisations. Those Esperanto speakers who want to see Esperanto adopted officially or on a large scale worldwide are often called the fin Finvenkistoi from Finavenko meaning final victory, or Pratselistoi, from Pratselo, meaning original goal. Those who focus on the intrinsic value of the language are commonly called Raumistoi, from Rauma, Finland, where a declaration on the near-term unlikelihood of the Finavenko and the value of Esperanto culture was made at the International Youth Congress in 1980. These categories, however, are not mutually exclusive. The Prague Manifesto, 1996, presents the view of the mainstream of the Esperanto movement and of its main organisation, the World Esperanto Association, the UEA. Symbols and flags. The earliest flag, and the one most commonly used today, features a green five-pointed star against a white canton upon a field of green. It was proposed to Zamenhof by Irishman Richard Gierhagen, author of the first Esperanto textbook for English speakers in 1887. The flag was approved in 1905 by delegates to the first conference of Esperantists at boulogne sur mer A version with an E superimposed of the green star is sometimes seen. Other variants include that for Christian Esperantists, with a white Christian cross superimposed with a green star, and that for leftists, with the colour of the field changed from green to red. In 1987, a second flag was chosen. In a contest organised by the UEA celebrating the first centennial of the language, it featured a white background with two stylized curved E's facing each other. Dubbed the Jubilea Symbolo, Jubilee Symbol, it attracted criticism from some Esperantists who dubbed it the Melono, Melon, because of the design's elliptical shape. It is still in use, though to a lesser degree than the traditional symbol, known as the Verdastello, Green Star. Politics. Esperanto has been placed in many proposed political situations. The most popular of these is the Europe Democracy Esperanto, which aims to establish Esperanto as the official language of the European Union. The Irish political party, Erigi, has recently adopted the Green Star as its emblem partly in support of Esperanto as an international language instead of English. Religion. Esperanto has served an important role in several religions, such as the Umutu from Japan and the Baha'i faith from Iran, and has been encouraged by others. Umutu. The Umutu religion encourages the use of Esperanto among its followers and includes Zamanov as one of its deified spirits. 
Baha'i Faith. The Baha'i Faith encourages the use of an auxiliary international language. While endorsing no specific language, some Baha'is see Esperanto as having great potential in this role. Lydia Zamanov, the daughter of Esperanto founder L. L. Zamanov, became a Baha'i. Various volumes of the Baha'i literatures and other Baha'i works have been translated into Esperanto. Spiritism. In 1908, Spiritist Camilo Chagneu wrote an article named Spiritism and Esperanto in the periodic La Via de Outre Tombe, recommending the use of Esperanto in a central magazine for all Spiritists and Esperantists. Esperanto then became actively promoted, at least in Brazil, by Spiritists. The Brazilian Spiritist Federation publishes Esperanto course books, translations of Spiritism basic books, and encourages Spiritists to become Esperantists. Bible Translations The first translation of the Bible into Esperanto was a translation of the Tank, or Old Testament, done by L. L. Zamanov. The translation was reviewed and compared with other languages. Translations by a group of British clergy and scholars before its publication at the British and Foreign Bible Society in 1910. In 1926, this was published along with a New Testament translation, in addition commonly called the Londono Bible, Biblio. In the 1960s, the Internazia Associo de Bli Bibliistoi kai orientalistoi tried to organise a new ecumenical Esperanto Bible version. Since then, the Dutch remonstrant pastor Gerrit Beverling has translated the deuterocanonical or apocryphal books in addition to new translations of the Gospels. Some of the New Trans Testament epistles and some books of the Tongue or Old Testament. These have been published in various separate booklets or serialised in the Oregno, but the deuterocanonical books have appeared in recent editions of the Londona Biblio. Christianity Christian Esperanto organisations include two they were formed early in the history of Esperanto. The International Union of Catholic Esperantists, two Roman Catholic popes, John Paul II and Benedict 151, have regularly used Esperanto in their multilingual Urbi et Orbi blessings at Easter and Christmas each year since Easter 1994. Individual churches using Esperanto include the Quaker Esperanto Society, with activities as described in an issue of The Friend, 1910, first Christadelphian publications in Esperanto. There are instances of Christian apologists and teachers who use Esperanto as a medium. Nigerian pastor Bear Efloranmi's Spirita Nutria, Spiritual Food, Yahoo mailing list, for example, has hosted weekly messages since 2003. Chick Publications, publisher of Protestant fundamentalist themed evangelistic tracks, have published a number of comic book style tracks by Jack T. Chick translated into Esperanto including This Was Your Life, Yen Via Tutu Vivo, Islam. Ayatollah Khomeini of Iran called on Muslims to learn Esperanto and praised its use as a medium for better understanding among peoples of different religious backgrounds after he suggested that Esperanto replace English as an international lingua franca 
It began to be used in the seminaries at Khom. An Esperanto translation of the Quran was published by the state shortly thereafter. In 1981, Khomeini and the Iranian government began to oppose Esperanto after realising that followers of the Baha'i faith were interested in it. Criticism Esperanto was conceived as a language of international communication, more precisely as a second universal language. Since publication there has been debate over whether it is possible for Esperanto to attain this position and whether it would be an improvement for international communication if it did. Esperanto proponents have been criticised for diverting public funds to encourage its study over more useful national languages. Since Esperanto is a planned language, there have been many criticisms of minor points. An example is Zamenhof's choice of the word edzo over something like sposo for husband or spouse or his choice of the classic Greek and Old Latin singular and plural endings, o, oi, a, e, over their medieval contractions, o, i, a, e. Both these changes were adopted by the Edo reform, although Edo dispensed with adjectival agreement altogether. Some more common examples of general criticism include the following. Esperanto has not yet achieved the hopes of its founder to become a universal second language, although many promoters as of Esperanto's stressed success it has had, the fact remains that well over a century since its publication, the Esperanto speaking community remains comparatively tiny with respect to the world population. In the case of the United Kingdom, for instance, Esperanto is rarely taught in schools because it is regarded by the government as not meeting the needs of the national curriculum. Many critics see its aspirations for the role of preponderant international auxiliary language as doomed because they believe it cannot compete with English in this regard. The vocabulary and grammar are based on major European languages and are not universal. Often this criticism is specific to a few points such as adjectival agreement an accusative case. Generally such obvious details are all that reform projects suggest changing, but sometimes it is more general. Both the grammar and international vocabulary are difficult for many Asians among others, and give a fair advantage to speakers of European languages. One attempt to address this issue is Loibam, which draws from the six most populous languages of Arabic, Mandarin, Chinese, English, Hindi, Russian and Spanish and whose grammar is designed for computer parsing. The vocabulary, diacritic letters and grammar are too dissimilar from the major Western European languages and therefore Esperanto is not as easy as it could be for speakers of those languages to learn, even though it is much easier to learn than any European language. Attempts to address this issue include the younger planned languages Ido and Interlingua. Esperanto phonology is unimaginatively provincial, being essentially Belarusian with regularised stress, leaving out only the nasal verbs, palatized consonants and z. Esperanto has no culture. Although it has a large international literature, Esperanto does not encapsulate a specific culture. Esperanto is culturally European. This is due to the European derivation of its vocabulary and its semantics. Both infuse the language with a European worldview. The vocabulary is too large. Rather than deriving new words from existing roots, large numbers of new roots are adopted into the language with the intent of being internationally accommodating when in reality the language only caters to European languages. This makes the language more difficult for non-Europeans than it needs to be. A similar argument is made by many Esperanto speakers, not against the language itself, but against the way it is in their view misused by many, mostly European, speakers. 
They argue that the compounds and derivations should be used whenever possible, and the new root words should only be borrowed when absolutely necessary. Esperanto asymmetry in gender formation makes it sexist. Most kin terms and titles are masculine by default and only feminine when so specified. There have been many attempts to address this issue, of which one of the better known is itchism, used by the Esperantist writer George Camacho, from which realism is derived. Esperanto is looks or sounds artificial. This criticism is often due to the letters with circumflex diacritics, which some find odd or cumbersome. Others claim that an artificial language will necessarily be deficient due to its very nature. Although the Hungarian Academy of Sciences has found that Esperanto fulfills all the requirements of a living language. Modifications Though Esperanto itself has changed little since the publication of the Fundamento de Esperanto, Foundation of Esperanto, a number of reform projects have been proposed over the years, starting with Zamenhof's proposal in 1894 and Ido in 1907. Several later constructed languages, such as Universal, were based on Esperanto. In modern times, Attempts have been made to eliminate perceived sexism in the language. One example of this is realism. However, as Res Esperanto has become a living language, changes are as difficult to implement as in ethnic languages. Epinomous entities. There are many geographical and astronomical features named after Esperanto, or after its creator El El Zamenhof. These include Esperanto Island in Z Islands off Livingstone Island, and the asteroids 1421 Esperanto and 1462 Zamenhof, discovered by the Finnish astronomer and Esperantist Roy Vaisala. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 Unported License, available at creativecommons.org.